Type 2 Meniere's disease. There are different types of Meniere's disease, and it's really important that you know which type you are because knowing the type that you have is going to tell you a lot about what you need to be doing for successful treatment and management of Meniere's disease. So, what we're going to talk about today is type 2 Meniere's disease, talk about the symptoms, uh, the different types of tests, and the causes of what I find to be type 2 Meniere's disease. So, let's get into it. So I made a video uh, a little while back about the different types of Meniere's disease that nobody told you about, and the types are as follows. So type one is you haven't had any vertigo episodes in two years, and obviously that's the you know the best kind of Meniere's disease to have. And if you have type one, you're probably not watching this. Now type two, what we're talking about today, that is when you're still having episodes of vertigo, uh, but you're not having dizziness symptoms or vestibular symptoms in between those attacks. Now that's different from types three and four. So in type three. Okay, type 3, you're having episodes of vertigo and you're having dizziness symptoms all the time or between episodes, vestibular problems. And then in type 4, you're not even having the episodes of vertigo anymore. You're just having the constant dizziness. Now, we're not talking about those. We're talking about type 2. Now, there is a difference between what causes type 2 and what causes types 3 and 4. So with type 2 Meniere's disease, basically I find that there's essentially two potential groups of causes for that. Okay, now... One is metabolic, which I'll get to in a second, and the other is structural. Now, what I mean by that is, is sometimes there are people that have structural changes in their inner ear that are eventually probably going to need surgery. Now, that could be endolymphatic decompression surgery, that could be uh, canal plugging, but those are obviously very uh, extreme treatments, and I don't think that someone with Meniere's should be doing those unless they've tried everything else, and I hope that what I'm telling you today is some stuff that your doctor you're working with already knows about. With the metabolic causes, to make it really simple, I the main thing that shows up is some sort of immune system problem. Now, there's a lot of different potential immune system problems, and I like to think about them in terms of immunophenotypes. Now, phenotype just means what something looks like. So immunophenotype is a term that means what is your immune system doing? Now, the vast majority of people that make it to me that have Meniere's, type 2 Meniere's, uh, they have something going on with their immune system. Now, not everybody, of course, because some people end up having to have, you know, the, uh, the surgeries because they've tried everything else. But when we're talking about immune system problems, there's basically four immune system uh, phenotypes in here. One is autoimmune. Now, autoimmune means your immune system is attacking you. Now, under that, there's basically known autoimmune problems that a Meniere's patient could have, and then there's unknown. So with unknown, what I'm saying is, is a lot of people with type 2 Meniere's disease have an autoimmune problem. They just didn't know it. Now, they may have a family predisposition. They may not have a predisposition. But again, one of the ways you find out if someone's got an autoimmune problem is you have to do tissue antibody testing. And, and antibodies are like little post-it notes that your immune system makes to stick onto something. And so if you're trying to find out, does a person have an autoimmune problem, then what you do is tissue antibody testing. And the way I like to do it is I don't do rheumatological, right? I don't do the ANA screen and then those kind of things because we're looking for something a little broader than that. And so I like to do uh, this multiple tissue antibody panel, which is going to let us look for about 25 different tissue antibodies, right? And it's basically a head-to-toe survey. We've got stomach, intestine, adrenal glands, musculoskeletal. And again, the point is, I mentioned a second ago, most people with Meniere type 2 don't have an inner ear autoimmune problem. What they've got is an autoimmune problem outside the ear or an inflammatory problem outside the ear that is manifesting because it circulates in their inner ear. And, and so if you've had steroids and it's helped, you know it's inflammatory because what do steroids do? They suppress the immune system. But that's not enough. You've got to try to find the source as best you can in order to give you long-term stability and long-term recovery. So that's the difference between known autoimmune problems that you've already been diagnosed with but still need to be investigated right, because there's these different phenotypes, and unknown autoimmune, I means you haven't had it detected yet, but you get it detected in the workup that I do, and then we find out, you know, what situation are we dealing with, right? And then I'll do a lymphocyte map test, or immunophenotyping, and that's where we drill down underneath the hood and find out, hey, beyond tissue antibodies, what is their immune system doing on a cellular level, right? So we're looking at T-cell populations, B-cell populations, uh, natural killer cell populations. And the point is, without getting too deep into here, because I, I go over this in some of my case studies, uh, is by measuring the T cells, B cells, natural killer cells, the lymphocytes, and looking at ratios, you can find out pretty quickly, A, is this type 2 Meniere's patient's immune system normal or not normal? 
And second, if it's not normal, in what specific way is it abnormal for that patient? Because that's gonna go a long way to designing the proper treatment to deal with their immune system, to try to bring it back into balance so that the Meniere's stabilizes. And here's the thing I gotta tell you. You can give me 100 people with Meniere's disease, 100 people with uh, the same you know, rotational vertigo episodes like we're talking about today, and every one of them has their own immunophenotype. It's just like getting yourself fingerprinted, right? So like you and I, you know, we have hands and ears and eyes, but I have no idea what your fingerprint looks like. I have to actually fingerprint, put the ink on it and see what it looks like. And that's the same thing with these phenotype tests. It's really important to help drill down and find out what does this particular patient have. So I don't have to waste time treating something they don't have, right? And I can know very specifically, you know, what am I dealing with? So those tests are really important when we're looking at immune system causes, autoimmune, both known and yet to be determined unknown, uh, unknown when we're talking about causes of type two. Now, the, the second type of uh, broad immune system phenotype here is what I would call allergic. Now, that means they could be very reactive to things in the environment. They could have, uh, I mean, actually, found, uh, there's a whole group of people within years that are very active to molds. So with an allergic phenotype, it's still the immune system. And very often, you've got to do things to uh, assess their barrier function. The lymphocyte map is still very helpful. The multiple tissue antibody test is still really helpful for those people. But they're not autoimmune, right? So there is a difference. Uh, the third sort of immune phenotype here is what I would just call auto-inflammatory or just inflammatory. But it's not autoimmune, right? It, there's not antibodies that are directing it. And those people could have nutrient deficiencies. They could have a blood sugar problem. I've seen prediabetes and type 2 diabetes uh, are generally, a, can be a real big problem in years patients because it's inflammatory. So that's why it's important to do a, a full, what I would call regular uh, blood work uh, workup on someone that has type 2 Meniere's so that you're looking for those things. Now, what I have found is a lot of people with Meniere's have never really had very uh, comprehensive blood work. They, they think they have, but they, they really haven't because no one's looking for the autoimmune problems. No one's looking for uh, the vitamin D deficiency or folic acid or B12 or all those kinds of things or seeing if their homocysteine is high, all of which can be a factor, uh, all of which I've seen be a factor in years patients that have type two. Now the fourth one uh, is rarer by a lot, and that is what I would call the deficient immune system phenotype. I have a case study about that, and basically it just means that these people have an immune system that's not competent enough, and so they tend to get sick a lot. And when they get sick, that's when they flare up and that's when the Meniere flares happen. So with those people, the trick is determining, okay, is this really what's happening? Then doing the appropriate thing, even with their phenotype, uh, for that person's deficiency, because they're not all the same, okay? So that's the broad, uh, metabolic causes for type two. And you can tell just finding out the type isn't the full answer, right? Then you've got to do the detective work. And that's where it gets difficult because you've got to be working with someone that knows all this stuff, that is willing to investigate it. And that, of course, is a big problem. I know a lot of doctors, well-meaning doctors, ENT doctors, they mean well, but they're just not going to look for a lot of this stuff because insurance won't let them, right? And if insurance doesn't pay for it, they don't talk about it, you know, and uh, then they get in this little box. So I don't want to be uh, negative about it, but I just hope that you're working with someone that understands the stuff we just talked about because it's going to go a long, long way uh, to getting you the correct treatment. Uh, because if you haven't tried everything, right, if, if you haven't tried these things that we've talked about today, right, uh, the different investigation, then I don't think you're necessarily a candidate for surgery yet, right? Because I myself have been surprised by several patients I've worked with. I hope someone that you're working with is doing this because you deserve to have this looked at to find out if it's a factor for you. So I'll be making other videos on type 3 and type 4 because the causes of that stuff is a little bit different than type 2. I hope you guys found this helpful. All right, I'll see you later.